Dave Randall. Hey, Dave. Uh, if someone shows up to a group ride and wants to be a, a pillion, what are the risks of, to a biker who takes on a passenger? So there's a good liability question, isn't it? Uh, I wouldn't do it, you know, because you're, you are taking on that responsibility. It's a huge responsibility even for you taking a, you know, a family member or a friend on the back of your bike. Uh, so that's just not something that I would, I would do. You know, uh, if you're a professional, like, I mean, I take people on the back of uh, motorcycles on the racetrack, but that's all implied that, the, that it's part of their, um, you know, the risk that they're taking by being there and they've signed waivers and everything else. And I'm a staff, so I'm protected that way. But yeah, I wouldn't probably do that. You know, Dave, I don't know if you, have you had that situation happen? Um, <clears throat> So uh, Dave's got the Q&A going on, I, that's good. Anybody else has questions now? I've seen we've gotten a, a, a number of people now. In case you were wondering where John, uh, John DiCarlo is, he's out riding adventure bikes out, in, out west with uh, Brett Tax, learning how to, how to handle the bigger bikes off-road. Uh, okay, we're gonna wait a little bit, oh, it's 7.01. All right, so let's just kind of start off here. So Dave kind of got us started. Okay, so Dave says last weekend at Metro West Riders. Uh, so did that, did, what did you do, Dave? Um, I don't know if, if you guys, if those of you who are watching can't see the Q&A window, you can open it up, it's down at the bottom. Uh, where it says Q&A is kind of to the right, uh, and you can sort of see what, what Dave is saying. Uh, I'll convey it. But so like I say, if, uh, if you're at a, at a group ride and Somebody's kind of randomly wants, you know, shows up and wants to be on the back. I've never heard of that happening. Yeah, Dave says, no way, Jose. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So the, the passenger's kind of crazy to consider getting on the back with somebody who they don't know if that's, if that's the case. Um, people get on the back with me because they do, they kind of trust that I'm uh, not going to toss them into the weeds. So, so and I'm, I, I ride pretty conservatively, although I, I ride to a point where, uh, it gets whoever I'm riding with on the racetrack, I'm talking about, uh, enough of a, an experience of how to be super smooth and, that, in, and to do it at speed. So I, this past weekend, gave two people rides on the back of their bike on, on the track. One woman was, they were actually going to be both women. Uh, one woman had an S1000R BMW, and I just posted the, uh, the video up on YouTube of me riding her bike uh, the session before she got on the back. And she just wanted to get confirmation uh, of how she was doing with her lines and, and things like that. So um, she got on the back, and we had a great time. She was really into it. She, uh, I could see when we were cornering that I could see her helmet in, in my peripheral vision, which was a great sign. That means she was really engaged in and getting her uh, her body involved with to the degree that it was appropriate uh, with the action that was going on, and that was really the fact that we were cornering pretty good. You know, we were going along pretty good. She was she was a good passenger. The second person that I uh, that I gave a ride to, she was struggling a little bit with going getting up to speed. And I witnessed that while I was on the track with, you know, with the group and saw her. And I, <clears throat> I approached her and just sort of talked with her a little bit and encouraged her in a couple of ways. And then afterwards, it occurred to me that it would be probably pretty beneficial for her to, to get on the back of her bike. Uh, I had her, both of them do it on the back of their bike because my bike, the Toronto, doesn't have a passenger seat. And, uh, and that worked out really well. You know, then you get a chance to see what your bike is capable of. So we ended up doing a, a two-up ride, and she had learned about trail braking by being on the back of the bike with me. She had been struggling with the rule that is pretty much sort of dictated by beginner courses or basic courses, you know, uh, the MSF, that <clears throat> that braking in a corner is a bad idea. Uh, well. It's, you know, for a raw beginner who's just trying to figure out the clutch and the throttle and the brakes and all that, it's not a bad idea not to, you know, it's, it's okay. I think it's, it makes sense to not have them try to chew gum and walk at the same time. But as soon as you are, uh, as soon as you are 
beyond the basics. You really have to understand the that the, some of the rules need to be broken. And I do mean need to be, like the, the absolute sort of dogmatic, never do this or never do that. <clears throat> That's just not going to serve you very well. And so this woman was pretty much felt like the rules were, were rather strict and she was breaking and stopping her breaking before she turned into the corner. And so it made it feel her feel really anxious that she wasn't going to be able to get the bike slowed before a, a corner. So she was going down the straightaway and I was suggesting she could on straight, straight, straight away at about 80 and she was struggling with that. And, uh, and so, but as soon as she saw that she could carry the brakes into the corner, uh, then it really made a difference for her. And I saw her then later going down uh, the straightaway into turn one at Palmer and she looked great. I mean, it was like 250% better. So it's just one of those curious things. So what, what does this have to do with riding with passengers? It's because she was a passenger. That, that's what she was able to do. Now, again, going back to Dave Randall's uh, um, comment about uh, having anybody on the back of your bike and that being a really bad idea. Um, I don't recommend you do that unless it's something that, you know, a responsibility you're taking really seriously. I'm going to talk about that in just a second uh, because things can go bad. Right? So Sally says, I'm looking forward to hearing you discuss cornering from the position of the passenger. All right. That's definitely on my list, Sally. Um, so let's, uh, let's get in more to the, the, uh, the program here. We've only got 13 people and really trying to get this, these numbers up because this is really important information. I do record these and I put them up later and uh, they do get a lot of, uh, of views later, you know, a couple hundred, which isn't too bad. But, and I'm doing this live actually on Facebook too at the moment, which I've never done that before. So that should also get some folks in. All right, so let's go down, down my little list again. I got my, my notes, I'm always prepared. Uh, first off, <coughs> passengers. Pretty good. I mean, you know, what's that's, it's a worth worthwhile thing to you know feel comfortable doing, and but it has to be done safely because imagine you having somebody on the back of your bike and they're putting their trust in you and you screw it up bad and they get hurt. You know, you're not gonna. It depending on how bad they are, you might really struggle with that in a huge way. You know, even if a tip over in a parking lot can be damaging and certainly. Uh, erode any trust that that, that that person would have in, in getting on the back of the bike um, with you any, at, at, in the future. And so I'm going to talk about some of the, the techniques and also um, the importance of practice and how you can get yourself a little bit more uh, proficient uh, at, at having a passenger on the back. Um, but what's my experience with passengers? Well, when Carolyn, my wife, who she was on last week's uh, camping webinar, she didn't know how, she wasn't her own motorcycle rider. She, she rode bicycles, uh, but then she was my passenger for a long, for, let's see, I guess about five years until she took the MSF course. And then she became, had her own motorcycle. And then, uh, then our daughter ended up, and when she, I think she was eight years old, she was uh, old enough to reach the foot pegs. Uh, and uh, that's when she became my passenger. And, and, and so I've had that experience of having regular passengers, and all of our uh, all of our family trips were two up. Uh, well, I should say family trips were motorcycle trips, and a lot of them were camping trips. Let me show you a photo of Janine. Let me share my screen. There's a photo of Janine when she was little. It's kind of funny, huh? If you can't make this out, I showed this photo last week. But this is her top of her helmet. She's fast asleep on the back of the bike. And this little armrest thing I made out of PVC pipe. And it goes all the way up to my back. So there's no way that she could fall asleep and squeeze, squeeze through there. Uh, some people, I'm going to talk about riding with passengers with kids. Uh, there's also backrest here. And the, some of the risks of that, she was big enough to reach the foot pegs on her own. Uh, she still was at that age where she would fall asleep. So I had to accommodate for that. It makes me cringe when I see... Uh, parents with their kid or presumably it's their kid on the back of a bike and you know they first off they don't have all protection and they are, don't have any all they're doing is relying on this little kid to hold on and think about that in the case of a swerve or something like that that they're not going to be able to hold on and they would get flung off the bike 
So this was my solution. There are other solutions with that. Actually, look at this. I'm going right to um, passengering with kids. Uh, there are other solutions. They have these little waistbands, you know, to have kids hold on. Uh, another one, which I think is a really bad idea, is that they have a waistband that goes around the the uh, rider, and then another waistband that goes around the kid, and it basically connects the two, like Siamese twins. But think about that. If you got into a, a crash, the 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 parent, again, assuming it's a parent to the kid. Uh, we could crush, you know, a, a child like that. So you would want them to separate. And in the case of this, if I were to, to have a crash, I would want Janine to separate from the bike as, uh, as much as it can. Now, this, I was the one concern about this is would she separate with, with this whole setup? Luckily, we didn't come, come to that to understand, uh, to, see, to test that. All right. So uh, let's, let's back up a little bit. That's sort of my experience with riding with passengers. Uh, I've not been a passenger much, except I do have passenger stories. When I was in Texas at the Circuit of the Americas, uh, that I was testing the S1000RR BMW, and the uh, with the ambassador, the BMW ambassador for the sport riders for the sport bikes, um, Glenn. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Kurt, uh, Kern. Jeez, what the heck? How come I can't think? Anyhow, I can't think of his first name right now. Uh, Kern, K-E-R-N. Anyhow, he's a professional racer, and, and I happened to be there, and he said he was trying to dial in the S1000 that he had as a two-up uh, bike, so he was going to carry passengers around, and um, so he said, hey, Ken, get on here. I want to kind of do a lap and sort of get an idea of the, if the settings, the suspension settings were okay. And I said, okay, so I got on, and it was like the most harrowing lap of my life. And it wasn't because I was afraid. I knew I, and that wasn't it at all. It's just that the G-forces, that he, he was dragging his knee and doing wheelies and everything else, and I'm hanging on like, ah. So it really kind of my neck and my arms holding on and all that was just uh, more than I. So that's an unusual um, situation when it comes to passengering, but uh, that was that's one of my only experiences. Except there's another one, which is that when I was doing photos, like taking photos for the book, the Riding in the Zone book, that I needed a photo, a particular photo, and it was, I had Carolyn ride her bike, and I got on the back with her in her passenger seat, and then I shot over her shoulder. And all that jiggling around, sort of, you know, she wasn't used to having a passenger at all, and all that jiggling around for trying to get the, the camera in the right position and all, uh, that kind of, you know, weaked her out a little bit. Um, so anyway, that's, that's all I got for being a passenger. So when it comes to passenger, uh, riding with a passenger, also this is, will uh, be focused also on if you are a passenger, like maybe you, you are, have been a passenger and you're, you're unsure about whether that was a, that that's a safe thing to do and how you can be better, uh, that, that will also apply to you here. Uh, I'm going to kind of field questions as I go because I don't have John here. A person riding on the back should stay upright. Okay, so I am Elton. I'm going to talk about the details of that. That's a great question. Um, Gretchen Beach. Hey, Gretchen. Uh, so let's talk about first off is safety has to be your, your primary goal. Remember, I, as I said, if you get somebody on the back and you screw up, you know, even tipping over in a parking lot, you're going to feel awful. If the, And especially now if they don't have gear, you know, somebody's in shorts and sandals and, you know, heaven forbid, no helmet, and you tip over and, and now they've got, you know, the potential of a concussion, certainly they're going to get skinned knees and, and maybe broken, well, the broken bones thing is less about um, all the gear all the time, but um, you, you do what you can. And so never let a, motor, a, a rider on the back of your bike that's not you know, sufficiently geared up for protection. And it protects you too, again, from if something were to happen, it can be either like a, oh, well, that was kind of embarrassing. Uh, get up, brush yourself off, get back on and off, off you go. Uh, or something that really is much more serious. <clears throat> I do know that, uh, you know, I get stories from friends who do two up riding a lot with their spouses and they've been doing it forever. Um, and this is just something else I'll bring up is as they age, they're, they're a little less steady when it comes to having a passenger on the back. So it's really important that they get a motorcycle that they feel really comfortable uh, with controlling at slower speeds. You know, at speed, you know, a motorcycle, you could jump off of it and it'll keep going without you. It's all about more or less the slower speed stuff. Um, that, and then so it's, you have to pay attention to that too. Some bikes are really much better 
at slow speed maneuvers and even at, at carrying passengers uh, than others. And so that's something you want to match the machine with, with the, uh, with the intent intention. So if you're planning on uh, riding with passengers, it's 100% important that they're protected and that they're comfortable as possible because you want a happy customer, a happy customer, a happy, happy passenger. Happy passenger is a happy rider. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna turn on another light because I'm getting a storm through here and all my natural light's disappearing. Hold on. All right, that should be better. A little glare on my glasses, what can I do? Um, okay, so all the gear all the time for your passengers. Um, make sure they're comfortable as best you can. Some bikes aren't, aren't good with comfort, just understand that. So don't plan a long ride if, you, if you're on you know, a motard or you know, a, a sport bike that's you know, got the foot pegs are up on, you know, under her armpits, his, his or her armpits. And then, you know, it's the center of gravity is so high and, and the wind blast actually hits the, the passenger on a lot of sport bikes when, because the perch of the, uh, of the passenger seat is usually up quite a bit higher than the, than the driver's uh, seat. So again, these are all the things to consider. Um, when I was in uh, Italy with the Beaches, Gretchen's on, on board here, uh, and, and Rob with Beaches Motorcycle Adventures, that uh, I picked a R1200 GS because Carolyn was going to ride on the back uh, with me. And she did that on another trip too. And we, we picked an R1200 RS. Uh, the GS, I think, was a better bike for a passenger. I mean, first off, it had a top box and it, it allowed her to lean back and it just gave her a little more room. The seat was a little flatter. And so, you know, it, and it was a really balanced bike. The GS, the 1200 GS is, is really easy. And for me, it felt really... Uh, balanced for having a passenger on the back for two weeks. So that's again another example of, of the right tool for the job. And uh, so all the gear all the time, safety. So the safety part, let's get back to that, is you have to be the best rider you can be before you have any business at all. Uh, asking somebody to take this, the risk that you're willing to take. You're willing to take it, you know, because you're having all the fun at the handlebars. And certainly they're going to have fun, but they're not going to be necessarily as uh, aware of the risks that you probably are aware of. That you've been somewhat trained, you've had some experience. That that a passenger is very likely, you know, just somebody who's an occasional passenger, very likely, not always. Um, that it those riders who those passengers who've been who are much more involved and are passengers a lot, like they ride with with their significant other. A friend or whatever a lot you really want to call them like co-riders because they really there are opportunities to be involved with with the actual riding of the motorcycle not a lot and i'll get into that in just a second but you can be really passive or you can be a little bit more involved and there are ways of doing that uh, so but when it comes to safety you have to be skilled you know oftentimes when i was an msf instructor you know i would get people that would pass the course and then they'd say, oh, I can't wait to get my, you know, my girlfriend on the back of the bike. And I would say, you know what, let's not do that, All right? Give it, a, give it a while. You have a lot more to learn. Get out on the street for a while, learn, uh, see how things go. And even then, you know, make, take another course, practice, practice, practice. And, and then maybe, you know, but I wanted to really instill the, that, uh, the seriousness of, of taking on that responsibility of having a... Uh, a passenger on the back. So when the other part of safety, when it comes to the rider's responsibility is you have to set aside your ego. Now, when I was young and I, you know, was all that, I'd have a motorcycle. And of course, I remember specifically one of the cute girls, cutest girls in high school wanted to ride on the back. Sure. Hey, great. You now what it's a perfect opportunity to show what, how badass I am. And, you know, I was, it was all, everything worked out fine, but you know, I was not, her safety was not in in forefront of my mind. You know, as we get older, and I'm sure all of you here are are mature, and because you're here listening to this, that um, uh, that you understand that. So you have to, but it's beyond that. It's really much more about putting your own your own desires for your that would normally be in the forefront, and putting them aside, and making sure that you uh, that you uh, um, are you know, um, 
doing what's right to make sure that your passenger is safe and, and having a good time. I uh, just see now that that's not Gretchen Beach here, it's Rob. Hey, Rob. Uh, now, Rob says, one of the things that I have discovered over the years is that riders tend to ride slower with the passenger, with the false idea that slowing down makes the passenger more comfortable. Interesting, interesting point. This, rather than improving riding skills, getting smooth and offering the passenger um, uh, I didn't quite get there, that tell them what's coming, far more important than slowing. So that's a really interesting point that I've made before that the perception that slow is safe. You know, yeah, you get more time and space to react to things that happen, but uh, there is oftentimes there's a cost to that. And that cost is that you, if you interrupt your natural timing of speed, uh, you know, the, that the rhythm that you would have normally in a series of corners that you know, you're going to, it's going to be more awkward. You want to still make sure that you have that flowing, uh, the, you know, the fluidity of your riding. And if, you know, slow, you should be able to do it slower or faster. So that shouldn't be uh, that much of a factor. But if all you're doing is relying on slowing down, thinking that that's the solution, that's what Rob's point is, and I, I, I agree 100%. Um, that said, on the, on the edge of safety, yeah, you should probably slow down uh, because I'll tell you why, and it's probably pretty obvious, is that you've got more weight that you have to slow down. So if in an emergency you, you have to brake hard, you've not only got the extra weight on the back, the, uh, that weight is gonna go flying forward into your back and you're gonna have to brace yourself with the handlebars. So uh, that would be a reason to, to minimize you know, any sort of need for emergency braking. Of course now, the best solution is to not get into a situation where you need to use emergency braking. So you give yourself more time and space, more following distance, uh, you, you slow it down a little bit, you're more conservative, you're covering your brakes when things kind of seem like they might be you know, getting busy. Those are the things that you really wanna be doing uh, uh, just to again make sure you're double check, you're you're being super careful about uh, doing all you can to make sure that the, the ride is going to be uh, safe for both of you. Um, let's see, again, I'm I'm sort of fielding questions as they come, so if you have any, uh, yeah, Rob says smooth, consistent, and predictable. That's always really the way you want to be when you ride a motorcycle. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that, about some techniques that, that'll help you do that. So one of the thing that I just read this thing online, it was from, um, uh, oh geez, I can't think of it. Boy, my name database sucks tonight. It's uh, Ryan, Ryan from Fort Nine. He posted a, a blog article on passengers and it was, it's really funny. Like usual, if you know uh, Ryan from Fort Nine, his videos are excellent and uh, he's a really smart guy and he wrote this thing on passengers and he kind of, spelled out or personified different types of, of passengers and it's pretty funny. And, but the point is, is that you, you do need to know your passenger. Some passengers are nervous. They'll be nervous no matter how you ride. Some passengers are, you know, are overly engaged, you know, more than you really need, want them to. Some are like trying to be helpful by putting their feet down at, at stops, which you don't want. You tell them to keep their feet on the foot pegs. Um, some are, you know, are, they're just, too big to be a passenger. That's something that's different. The physical attributes of somebody is not something you can do. That's where a better suited bike would come into play. If you have, if your passenger tends to be on the larger side, then, the, then really find a bike that's going to support that extra weight of you and the passenger and also give, you know, again, comfort. So know your passenger. This is something that, that if it's your spouse, then, you know, you're going to have a sense of that already. But they may really suit, they might get on a motorcycle and immediately go, hey, yeah, this is great. And they're engaged and they're having fun and it might be something you didn't even expect. And then the other side of it, it might be somebody, you know, the, us, your spouse might be really active and, and athletic and get on a motorcycle and just like don't want any part of all, being in traffic so exposed. And so that's, they're both, per, they're all perfectly valid. So um, when it comes to, uh, knowing the passenger, that's just something that you have to pay attention to. And then you have to accept that that's the way they are and ride accordingly. And this is when you put a passenger on, it's not about you. It can't be, it's, I wouldn't say it's not about you at all. It's just that it's got to be much more about your passenger. And that's just 
and it's just a mature way to go and it's the safest way to go and uh, and it's going to encourage your passenger to join you again in the future if not if it's a, if you give that person a bad time you know and ask them to do it again why would they say yes so it's in your own best interest in that way okay so let's get into a few nuts and bolts um about tips for being a passenger i do have a article on the website my website uh, tips for being the perfect passenger and that's really an article uh, that's directed toward the passenger more so but doesn't mean that the rider can't read the, the, those tips and, and pass them on or, or you know, educate your, your passenger um, about the things to do uh, that you need them to do to be a good passenger, which is the first thing, the nuts and bolts part, is that you have to educate that passenger. Uh, tell them not to put their finger in the chain. Don't tell them not to touch that hot part. They don't know this stuff, right? There are car drivers or they're just you know, kids or you know, whatever, you don't know. So you have, it's your job as the more educated person of the, of the two of you uh, to educate them. And wouldn't you feel bad if, you know, if that person burned their leg on the exhaust? Well, first off, they shouldn't be um, in shorts you know, or bare-legged. They should have full coverage. So there you go, strike one on you that you let them even get on a bike without, without um, you know, good, you know, long pants and good gear. But if they just point out this is hey listen this is really hot here you know this exhaust this is you know, something you need to avoid and then tell them also as far as educating them how to hold on and i'll give you a couple tips there uh how to mount and dismount so let's we can start to talk about that stuff also how to you know when you're on the road and on the on the bike how to lean with the bike and that sort of thing so uh let's talk about mounting and dismounting there are a couple ways of mounting a motorcycle, and I've encouraged passengers, I have students that bring their, their spouse, uh, their passenger friend, uh, on my training, uh, you know, my street training. And we do some time in the parking lot, and we do that whether there's passengers or not. And there's specific things that we work on, um, and we practice. Uh, and one of the things is just getting on the motorcycle. And I see how they do it right, you know, as a baseline. And then I make some suggestions. Sometimes they've got it all sorted out, you know, because some, again, some motorcycles are easier to get on than others. Um, but if you have like a top box and, you know, swinging your leg up and over, that's not, that's not going to work. So if, you know, then the other option is to, you know, get up on the, the uh, say, le left passenger foot peg because the side stand is leaning toward you and then sort of getting the other leg up and over the seat. You know, that's one option. But oftentimes, depending on the bike, that foot peg is up pretty high. And so a lot of people don't have the leg strength to then, you know, get themselves up uh, like a saddle, you know, like, a, like on a horse, getting the foot in the stirrup and then having the, that left leg strong enough to get them up uh, high enough to then, you know, get the leg on the other side of the motorcycle. So what I actually suggest oftentimes is that the rider stays off the motorcycle. Now, this would imply that the, the rider is already on the motorcycle. And the MSF sort of suggests that this is a way to do it. And the rider's on the motorcycle and then the passenger gets on. Now, if that's the case and that works for you, fine. You're on the bike, you hold the front brake so that the bike can't roll, okay? And you brace yourself, you put your outriggers out and you brace yourself and you give them, okay, I'm ready for you, go. Uh, they also, the MSF says that, uh, you know, keep it in first gear and, and even, you know, have the bike running. I don't know, but that's, uh, that isn't ne necessary. Again, the idea of like just keeping the bike from rolling, that's important, uh, and then bracing yourself. Now you can keep it on the side stand and brace yourself. I've done that, you know, let the side stand do a lot of work. And, uh, but again, keep that uh, front brake, you know, clamped. Uh, the other way to do it is that the rider stays off the motorcycle and you then reach over with your left hand and clamp that front brake while the passenger gets on the motorcycle as though they are going to be the rider. And then they scoot themselves back. So they're gonna get on the bike, they're gonna put their feet on your, the driver's foot peg, pegs, and then they're gonna use that leverage to just scoot themselves back onto the seat and then put their feet up on their foot pegs. That seems, that's the most, the easiest way to do it that I've seen. And this is again, important for people that are a little older, maybe a little bit more overweight. And so then they don't have to, you know, to ask them to try to get up and over the back seat of a motorcycle. 
that's a little much. And you got panniers, you know, get your, your side cases, your top case and all this stuff. You just avoid that whole problem. Um, and then once the rider is, the passenger is in position, then the rider carefully gets on. Now the rider has to get on, you know, they can't swing their leg over the way they might do otherwise. So you're going to have to step up on your foot peg and then step over your seat. Or, or however, if you're nimble enough, get your leg up onto the seat and then scoot yourself on. Uh, again, I'm not so concerned about how you get on the bike as long as you don't knock the bike over. I'm really t I'm wanting, I'm, again, I'm going to be more concerned about making sure my passenger can get on and off the bike easily. Okay, well, what about getting off the bike? Uh, reverse the procedure, you know, I, I let you get off, you hold that front brake, and then, of course, always make sure your side stand is, is well positioned, and then the, the passenger scoots forward and then gets off just the way you would, okay? Uh, which I will say, this is something that I've helped people with who struggle getting on their bikes. I'm talking about just the driver, the rider, is that to get off a motorcycle, you can stand up on the foot pegs, you know, like if, as if you were in a horse and you were in two stirrups and you just stand up. So your, your butt's off the seat, you're standing up, and then you just swing the outside leg up and over and then you can step off, you know, so you, you actually are standing on the left foot peg. And that, you know, again, that's just, Try it out and do it in a part in a garage. You want to know where it's safe and and just try a few different ways of getting on and off the bike. You see how much time I've spent on just getting on and off the bike because this is important. Because again, you are trying to accommodate somebody who may never, who may not at all have ever been uh, on a bike. Okay, so where are we at? Uh, talking about educating the passenger now when they when they're underway, you want to certainly. And tell them to be still, but I say be still-ish. Now, obviously jerking around, especially if it's a bigger uh, uh, person, that they do need to be still. And But fluid, you want them to also be fluid. Stiff uh, passengers, that doesn't serve you very well either. Somebody who's just really rigid, you know, um, that wouldn't be very helpful. So you want them to know that they need to be relatively still, especially when you come to a stop because that's, you know, the bike is less stable the slower you go. So as you're starting to roll to a stop, that would be a, a time when they need to be super careful about being just real relaxed, let the bike move under them, and that they just stay, you know, almost, in, um, you know, really like they're floating over the seat just by being real smooth, let the bike kind of move around. Um, when you do come to a stop, tell them to keep their feet on the foot pegs, right? Because that's going to just unbalance you if they swing their, their leg out. Besides, they're not going to reach the, the, the ground sufficiently anyhow. So uh, so that's, that's one thing. It's just kind of be still. Now, the other part of it, though, is that when you lean, you need them to lean with the motorcycle at least or lean with you when you be leaning with the motorcycle. Now, to another degree, mostly that's all the, the passenger does, right? They just lean with the, with the rider. They don't do really anything else. They just be part of the motorcycle, right? Let the rider do everything. Otherwise, if you're doing anything uh, that makes it so that you're changing the center of gravity, the rider has to accommodate for that. And, and the passenger, you wanna make sure the passenger doesn't, doesn't do anything extreme. Now that said, like the photo that, some of you probably haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna share my screen again with uh, to show you the photo of me and Janine right here that you can see how she's leaning into the corner she's looking over my shoulder now this is on the racetrack so we're moving right along and and so the more active you are in the corners obviously that that would be when you'd want your passenger to also be more active and so you can see that she's looking over my inside shoulder that encourages your passenger to lean with you if not slightly more now you don't want it much more because then you're going to have to compensate for that. You'll get oversteer. Um, and, and you can also, I just want to point out other things is how do you hold on? Well, in this case here, this is an option. This again is more appropriate for more performance riding, which again, the only reason I'm doing this is because we're on the racetrack and Janine trusts me and I know what I'm doing and all that. Um, but that having her hands on the back of the gas tank like this, that is something that can help her brace for any, any, you know, significant slowing forces. And then she's holding on with the inside of her forearms against my waist. And that works pretty well. Now, for regular street riding, she wouldn't need to, to have the hands on the back of the, the tank. Uh, then in which case she could have her hands just on the side of my waist. Uh, that's that's, um, that's sort of the typical way that you would want your, your uh, passenger to be 
is just to hold on lightly but firmly uh, on your on your waist. Um, so, the, but the thing is that if you are having get, got a passenger on the back of your seat who's never been on a motorcycle before, and you know what I'm where I'm getting this, if you've ever had somebody who you're just giving you know Aunt Grace a ride, and first time she's ever leaned a motorcycle into a, you know on a motorcycle, she's gonna probably not lean with you. She, uh, she's going to have her her body upright, and because she's afraid, you're gonna lean this way. She's gonna keep the bike upright, and now you're gonna have to compensate for that, and that's a dangerous situation. Uh, that's primarily because uh, as humans, we really are only comfortable leaning at about 14 degrees uh, unless we've been, you know, ridden, been athletic and skied and things like that. Uh, most people who haven't done that, uh, leaning much more than that, than that, uh, that it's really uncomfortable for them. So naturally, you're going to have to lean more than that 14 degrees. And uh, so that's, uh, that's, gonna, that's why people kind of do that. And so that's why you want them to kind of hold on to your waist and look over your inside shoulder. It's gonna encourage them to, to lean with you, okay? Um, the other thing they can do is brace with their knees against your outer thighs. Uh, that's something that is real helpful with uh, when breaking. So have them just kind of squeeze their, their knees into your, uh, your upper thigh. Uh, that's all, always a great thing. Uh, you know, just a way to can stabilize all the, the potential of weight being thrown forward. Uh, where they can hold on besides the, the you know, around the waist is that, some, you know, motorcycles have grab rails and uh, most of them. And that's a, an option, you know, certainly they can put their hands back and brace themselves that way. Uh, and as long as they're comfortable, you know, are able to lean with the, the rider and all. I know that Gretchen and Rob, you know, are so comfortable and, and Gretchen's barely even holding on at all. She's taking photos while we're going through the Italian countryside. So that's an experienced uh, passenger. And this is with Rob riding at a really quick pace too. So uh, it's really something that, uh, you know, that is acquired, you know, over time. Uh, so let's see, we have some more questions. Ilton, what is, the, what is really the fact? Does the person riding on the back should always be sitting up straight and do not move along with the rider? So I just answered that. Um, that just lean with the with the rider. That's the simple answer. Okay, remain neutral. Chris, yes, Chris Pippen. Remain neutral is a great way to put it. You know, just be part of the bike. Let things happen. Don't resist. You know what's going on because things are, might be going on that you're uncomfortable with the passenger. You know, going over certain bumps. You know, especially in slow speed maneuvers, the rider has to be still. So when you do a tight U turn in a parking lot. Um, you know, you, there's a complex sort of complex technique to do it correctly as a solo rider. When you have the extra weight on the back, it's important that the rider knows to just, when we're going slow and we're making turns, is to kind of keep your body upright, not lean with the bike. You know, because if you do that and the passenger does, does that, gravity has a, a, a pretty good lever on you and the motorcycle, and it's going to be hard for you not to, to have to put your foot down. So, that's one thing about you know, coaching your, your, uh, your, your passengers when you're doing tight U-turns is to have them counterweight, which is what you want to be doing too, uh, which go, comes into the practicing, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. It's one of the things you want to practice before you get them on the, uh, out on the road. Um, the other thing is to have, encourage your rider to anticipate what, what's going on. Uh, a passive rider, somebody who's just is 100% just sightseeing, they may really not be ready if you have to break quickly uh, and and it's better if they can kind of just pay attention and see all right especially if you're in traffic and there's a lot of you know intersections and stuff that that's something that you would really want your passenger to look over your shoulder and uh, just pay attention and see what's going on and then be able to brace themselves knowing that you know when something might you know cause you to uh, stop or slow quickly and that would be that squeezing the, uh, the thighs. Um, so when, when you are practicing this stuff, let's talk about that. Uh, you wanna go to the parking lot, you wanna put your passenger on the back, fully geared up on a clean parking lot. And I want you to practice uh, cornering, which all that really is for the, at this point, the purpose of a passenger at, at the beginning is just getting them used to lean angle. So get out there and just do circles, go in both directions so you don't get dizzy. And get yourself, you know, gradually lean over a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, 
and just encourage the rider to, to the passenger to just relax and to trust the tires. Cause you know, just like you, when you first ride, started riding, it was hard to trust the tires that they were going to stick uh, and that they have to, they have to develop that, that uh, trust as well. And they're trusting you. Yeah. But you know, they have to be shown that, that it's true that you, you can lean a motorcycle over, you know, quite a bit uh, and that you're, you're still going to be okay. And then it's not just going to fall over. So you're acclimating them to, to being a passenger. Uh, so that's just the, the first thing is right there is just get, get doing corners, doing circles, have them look over your inside shoulder. So when you're doing circles, have them look in the center of the circle, which is where you should be looking too. And a lot of you don't. So the whole slow speed maneuver practice and, and you know, that's, there's an awful, we did a whole uh, Facebook live on that. Um, so I would encourage you to go look at that. It's on the website. Uh, let's see. So practice, the other part that you need to practice is emergency braking. And this is because of, for obvious reasons, you're gonna get, need to get the feel for what it's like to come to a, a quick stop with extra weight on the back. And again, not only because now you've got more weight to stop or to slow, it's gonna take a lot more brake force, but also you're gonna get somebody slamming into the back of your, of your back or your helmet. Uh, and that's that you have to sort of get a feel for that and you have to anticipate it and you have to know how to manage that. So you need to get your core strong, your, your core braced for that. And you have to then brace yourself with the handlebars, hopefully not upsetting the steering of your bike. You know? So it has to be as, as equal as it can be. And again, practice that and practice it and break, work, work your way up to it, work your way up to just sort of, you know, firm stops and then more emergency stops and try to get the thing stopped just as hard as you can. So here's the thing about braking with a motorcycle, with a passenger on a motorcycle, is that you, when you're alone, the front brake is your primary stopping brake. Your rear brake is your kind of what I call your control brake. It adds brake force, but it's not really the, 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 um, the brake that's gonna really stop a motorcycle that well. Uh, when you have a passenger on the back, all the, a lot more weight is now over that rear wheel. And so that means your rear brake has a lot more importance. It doesn't mean you can get the bike stopped with just the rear brake. Don't, do not ever think that. It's, your front brake is still your primary brake. It's just that your rear brake now can actually be used harder. Uh, if you're alone and you brake really hard, and the, the nose is going to pitch onto its nose. The, the, rear, the, uh, the, the rear tire is going to get light and it's going to lock easily or your ABS is going to kick in. So, but with a passenger on the back, that won't happen, not nearly as easy. So you can go ahead and use much more of that rear brake. So practice that when you're doing your emergency stops in the parking lot with your passenger on the back. Um, uh, the other thing you need to practice, and I mentioned it a little bit before, is slow turns, slow U-turns. Uh, get them right yourself first, you know. I, every student that I work with on the street, it, it needs to work on slow speed maneuvers. And I'm talking U-turns and circles, you know, just simple things. And, uh, you know, the technique is, there are steps to it and you have to practice it. And if you can't do it alone, you're not going to be able to do it with a passenger. Okay. And it's really hard to paddle walk with that extra weight on the back. So you really do need to learn how to uh, maneuver your bike with the bike's power, with the clutch. Uh, because again, you're not going to be able to move it, maneuver the bike, especially if you're in a bit of a hill and all that. You have to make a turn from a stop that's very slow and you can't go fast. You got to practice it. That's all there is to it. So you may ask, well, how do I make a tight U-turn? I've got articles on that on my website. I've got videos about that. Uh, there's a lot of information out there about how to do that. Um, again, my website, ridinginthezone.com. Just, just type, type in the search field, slow, slow speed or just slow. Um, so practice, practice, practice. I just cannot emphasize that enough. And like I say, when I have students that bring their passengers, they're you know, a passenger with them, uh, we practice this stuff and it's quite, you know, eye-opening for both the rider and the passengers. You know, they've been riding. I know that uh, a friend of mine who came up from Georgia with his wife and they took my course and they've been riding together, you know, two up for years. But, you know, how often did they have to do an emergency stop? Not often. And I think they had a story or two, you know, because he's a really good rider. He's, he didn't get himself into the position where he had to do emergency maneuvers. So he was always, you know, had good strategies for anticipating and, um, 
But when we practiced emergency stopping, I gave them these few tips and they were like, oh my gosh, if we had ever had to do an emergency stop without knowing these things, it could have gone really badly. So you do want to make sure that you're practicing this stuff. It's different than when you ha are alone. That's all there is to it. The weight bias, everything's different. And so when you are, like I said it before, when you're doing these tight U-turns, you have to keep your speed steady, you have to counterweight, and your passenger has to counterweight just a little bit, not much. Again, you're gonna compensate for the bike when you're like you when you are alone. So you don't want the uh, your passenger to do anything more dramatic than what you know than what you're doing. So just have them not lean in. And that's that's that is sort of the, the way you're gonna manage that. Uh, okay, so there's that. Let's uh, talk a little bit about just life with a passenger. The, to make your passengers you know, as comfortable as possible, we talked about that. A top box is a great place and with a pad on the back, it makes them feel secure. And Carolyn loves it when we, we have the top box. I know that Rob Gretchen doesn't like the top box at all. She feels much you know, confined by it and, and, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. She's very balanced. She knows Rob is, is not gonna like hit the gas and cause her to flip back. She, and he's not gonna, you know, he, he's again, a really good rider. He's not gonna, get them into a situation where it's going to have to break really hard even when he's riding really fast on the in, in the curves which i was riding behind him with carolyn on the back with me is that you know super smooth it's like you don't break hard into a corner you 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 manage the corner in a way that it, the breaking is gradual think of like eric tro from riding in the zone i'm riding zone from staying safe uh has a phrase that's that's like pretend you have a, a hot bowl of soup on your gas tank and that don't spill it. And that's going to be how you want to manage having a, um, a passenger on the back. You know, you don't want your helmets to clunk and, uh, you know, that's you doing something wrong. Okay. So that's just keep that in mind. Be as smooth as you can be. Uh, so that's a big part of that is just to be, you know, get, make sure that they're comfortable. Now, that also means making sure that they have proper gear for the weather. So it's going to be cold. And this is more really could be for somebody that's just a friend you said you invited them say hey let's go to the beach on sunday you know and, you know and they've never been on a bike before so you take a little time you make sure that they have gear if they don't have gear which they're not going to have a helmet they're not going to have a decent jacket or pants and stuff uh that's kind of on you and i do know people that you know they keep their gear that uh, their old gear and as they upgrade and they'll just keep it like they'll have a helmet and, you know, hopefully, you know, it's not too old and, uh, and stinky and all that, but it's something that at least you have. And hopefully the person has a similar size head, but it's just something that however you manage that you have to borrow gear, whatever, you just don't take that risk. They have to be uh, geared up. So, uh, so make sure that, so that you pick up, you know, whoever your friend is to go to the beach on Sunday and you, the weather forecast is for, you know, 90 degrees. Okay. Don't put them in a black leather jacket. I know this sounds like, you know, how am I going to do this if you know, I have to invest in, in more gear than, you know, and that's just crazy talk. But I don't know what, you know, what else are you going to do? Have them ride in shorts or even jeans and a windbreaker? Yeah, might get away with it, you know, do the best you can. You can do that, but understand the risk you're taking. That's all. I mean, it's, it's about risk perception. And so are you willing to take that risk or, you know, of having your, your passenger get injured, even if you tip over in a parking lot? So uh, that's just something that you need to pay attention to. Now, it could be, as you know, weather changes. You know, the forecast is for sunny, day, sunny and beautiful all day. And then suddenly a storm comes ripping through and the temperature drops 30 degrees and your passenger is shivering, you know, lips are blue. And that's, again, that's kind of on you. You can't anticipate everything but they're used to being in a car, you know? They're used to being inside in, in stormy weather. You're, you're used to being, you know, taking the risk and, and getting caught in the rain. It's part of riding a motorcycle. Um, but that's, again, you're the educated one. You have to take that responsibility. Uh, one thing that makes uh, riding together with Carolyn and I, whether we're, she's on back or if she's on her own bike, are, is some way of communicating. Now, uh, communicators, Bluetooth communicators, I use Senna. They are awesome. And when you have them for a passenger, the whole idea of thinking that you can like yell loud enough uh, is it, you can do it. I know Gretchen and Rob do that and it works for them. She knows when to, um, when to talk and when he'll be able to hear. Um, and, you know, he has, tends to ride with his, his modular helmet up. So 
that that's a, a way that they can manage that. Uh, but it's way easier if you can, you know, get some communicators and, you know, rider to passenger communicators that it makes life so easy. You can chat, you can talk. It's like, Hey, I need, I need to use the bathroom. Otherwise you need, you need some sort of, uh, of hand signals, you know, uh, it's, smack upside the head to slow down I don't know <laughs> you know anything that you come up with but you, there's that's an important thing otherwise you can get a passenger that's back there just enduring you know it's like you know when is it when are we going to stop you know my butt's hurting my I gotta pee and it's like I'm hungry I'm thirsty I'm cold whatever so you have to have some some sort of basic plan of like we got to pull over um, but the communicator makes it so much better okay what else is there I think I'm pretty much gone through my list I'm gonna need some questions from you guys. Let's see what we got here. Rob, strong believer in passenger self-supporting, not putting any weight on the rider during braking. He's absolutely right. And so that's why I, I can, it's really hard, you, you know, unless you've got really good core strength, that if somebody stops quick, that you're going to not go forward. If you hold on behind you on, you know, some, uh, some hand grips, uh, some handrails, that can help you to pull yourself back. But again, a lot of people don't have that strength in their arms. So squeezing the, the, the uh, knees, the legs inside uh, in tight to the, uh, the, the rider's upper thighs, I think that's one decent uh, solution. Now, let's go on and see what Rob has to say. My mission as a rider is to give the passenger cues that deceleration is coming. Great. The passenger's mission is to get off my back <laughs> and support themselves while we are braking. Okay. That requires the passenger to use the grab rail or luggage rack as a counter to weight to forward momentum. So it's just exactly what I just said. Proper handholds uh, are around the waist with one hand and on uh, with one hand and on the rack grab grab rail with the other. So that's how if you saw what Janine was doing, she had two hands on the, on the gas tank and then she used her forearms to to uh, hold on. What Rob's suggesting is that you have one hand on the grab rail. Uh, or the panniers, sometimes they've got handles, and then the other one is around the waist. That's sort of, that's my preferred method uh, for doing that. So you get both, that, that left arm, if it's this arm, is, is bracing to go forward, and then the other arm is bracing to go back on, under acceleration. Um, so here's also, have a top box, don't lean into, uh, don't lean on it. Uh, the bike doesn't handle properly when the passenger is oozing all over it because <laughs> you are, you're, you're weighting the back of the, of the bike even more. You want to be central uh, on your seat. Uh, says, and the passenger is removed from the, case, from the cues that the rider is trying to give. So he's, he's talking about having some contact between the rider and the passenger, you know, belly to back. Uh, and I agree with that. There are times, I mean, Carolyn, she's usually right there and she, she'll use the, uh, the backrest and the, and the, um, uh, the top box uh, occasionally, and it gives her just a, a bit of a break. And it's during those times when it's appropriate that she can kind of chill out a little bit. Uh, Gretchen, or that says, yeah, Rob says, I hate top boxes, okay? Uh, but Carolyn sold on them, so I, you know, what do I do? Uh, five broken legs with bloody things. Oh, okay. Rob's, uh, but not side cases, Rob? Uh, yeah, okay, two hand, uh, hands on grab rails is a very difficult way to ride on the back. To, uh, on the back, It is, I agree. Boy, Rob, I should have you on here. Maybe I can make you, uh, if we have no more questions, then maybe I'll put you on here if I can figure out how to do that. A uh, little bit more about riding with kids. Sure, Elton wants me to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, riding with kids, the primary thing you need to do is make sure that they don't fall off, right? Now, but let's step back. The risk of that, think about that. You think that maybe you know, your girlfriend or your boyfriend or somebody gets hurt because you tip over or get into a crash and they get hurt. Well, they're adults. You know, they chose to some degree, they understood the risks, some of the, at least some of the risks of riding on the back of a motorcycle. A child doesn't. They're just all, all in. You know, they're like, yeah, sure, this sounds like great fun. And suddenly they're hurt really bad. And you know, that's just a terrible situation. So you have to be really, really on top of, of you know, aware and that you're accepting an awful lot of risk when you put a child on the back of a motorcycle. Uh, Carolyn and I did it. We chose to do it. We had no incidents over the whole course of, of the many years that we rode with Janine on the back. Um, we knew that Carolyn was more comfortable hauling the tent and everything else, and I would carry Janine. 
Um, we were both skilled riders and we knew that we really were going to always um, ride in a way that was going to minim minimize the risk. Anything could happen, but minimize the risk. Uh, so there's that. Now, it can be a real problem. I mean, never, if you get like, say, your niece or somebody that just says, hey, you know, Uncle Jimmy, can we go for a ride on your motorcycle? You better ask the parents, you know, if suddenly you, you've got your niece on the back of your bike and, and that's just crazy. You gotta, you can't do that without permission from a parent. And again, the parent may not know how, the type of risk that you're taking. So you gotta be really, really super careful about that. Now, let's say, okay, you, you've decided that that's an okay thing to do and that we're gonna try this out. Um, again, the bike has to be appropriate. So first off, the kid has to be able to firmly put both feet on their on the passenger foot pegs, right? So that's going to be something at least they, they're not going to be flopping around, you know, because they could easily fall right off the first time you, you do a, certainly a swerve. Uh, they, they won't be able to brace themselves at all. And will they be able to hold on? Little kids, not really. They don't have the strength for that. Granted, they're lighter, but they're not, and they're not going to be paying attention at all. So there's an awful lot of, of pitfalls with having kids on the bike. Uh, let me say the photo that I, I'll put it up again, uh, just to show if anybody missed it. Uh, this photo with, with Janine on the back, falling, completely fall asleep, fell asleep with my PVC bar going all the way across. It's a big U. And then over here, and there's a big um, backrest for her there. That's all of our camping gear. Um, that made it so that I knew that she wasn't going to fall off. And if we were to crash, she would hopefully separate she would separate from the um, from the motorcycle, um, which that would be what I would want to have happen. So that's what I have to say about that. The other part of it actually is you got to get them geared up. Now, putting an adult helmet on a on a kid's head it's a bad, bad, bad idea. They make DOT approved uh, helmets for kids, even if it's a dirt bike helmet. It's DOT approved. It's not Snell, but it's, it, and it'll, but the fit is really important. And yeah, they're going to outgrow it, and I know that, but. You resell that stuff, you know. There are other kids out there that are going to want, you know, going to want that that gear that your kid outgrew. So with Janine, we had you could probably see in that photo we had we had leather pants for her, and I bought that from somebody whose kid outgrew them. And then we had I think she had like work boots that were you know went up over the ankle. They were you know decent enough protection for her. Uh, finding motorcycle specific boots for a kid that's a little tough. At least it was when she was young. And then the jacket, we had a little leather jacket for her for a while. It was pretty sturdy. Uh, but then she outgrew that and got her, I had to actually order it from, from the UK, uh, a Cordura jacket that was for, for her size, for a kid and had armor. Uh, so, and that was the, the uh, I think that was the jacket that, uh, that I have that she had in here. Nope, that's the leather jacket it looks like. So that was when she was pretty young. That was when she was eight, I think. Okay, so that's what I got about um, passengers. Anybody who comes to a track day and you want to get a ride on the back, I'm game. I need to, I'll find a bike with a passenger seat. You have to be fully geared up though. Just like I've been saying, I'm not gonna ride anybody without full gear. And we'll go out and we'll do some, do some laps and that'll be fun, It'll be an experience for you. Happy to do it. Um, so if you are a rider or passenger and you want to learn more about this stuff, Riding in the Zone website, We've got that. There's a lot of information out there. And if you come and do street training with me, we'll do practice and bring your passenger with you. All right. I guess I'm good. So if you guys are too, uh, then we'll say see you later. Mm -hmm.